Uh, hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk about the transformer low no load current. Try to answer different questions about this phenomena. Some of them are theoretical, some of them are practical. Uh, this no load current is known in the literature sometimes as the excitation current, sometimes the word magnetization current, but the most common name uh, is the no load current. So I would like to answer a couple of questions so that we have a good understanding of this current. What is it? Why it's important? Why we measure it? And why it is nonlinear? These are a couple of the questions that I'd like to, to answer with you today. So basically when we have a transformer, as we know, the transformer is made from two windings, the primary windings with a number of turns equal to NP, and the secondary winding on the secondary side equal to an S. Now, when I energize the transformer by an AC voltage, we have a primary voltage VP, and then I will have an induced voltage in the secondary. Now, in the secondary, we'll go and connect our load, whatever the load is. So I will have a secondary voltage. I will have a primary current and a secondary current. And in ideal transformer, basically, the voltage in the primary side divided by the secondary is equal to A. A is the turns ratio of the transformer, which is basically in B, the number of turns in the primary divided by an S. The current relationship is the reverse. So the I, the current in the primary divided by the current in the secondary is equal to one over A. So this is an ideal transformer. Now, if I come and disconnect the load, and make the transformer from the secondary side is an open circuit. So I is basically here is equal to zero. Now, according to this formula, if I is equal to zero, we know that I P is equal to I S times one over A. Since this is equal to zero, I S, so I P equal to zero. However, if we come and measure the current here using an ammeter, you will see that there is a current. And this current is the one that we call it the no load current. So what does it, the meaning of the word no load? When the secondary side has no load in it, there will be at the primary side, there will be a current there. So that is the meaning of the no load current. Now the question is, why is this current needed? Why does it exist? If we take this very simple magnetic circuit, Okay, and we have a current and number of turns in. Now, once we have a number of turns with the direction of the current will be in my four fingers, we will have a flux and this flux will go in the magnetic material. Now, how in the transformer we induce a voltage in the secondary? Basically, once you have turns on this side, you will have an induced voltage here Vs. But without this flux, you cannot have an induced voltage. So that flux is needed and it has to be time varying. This is why here at the primary side, it has to be an AC voltage. So without that flux, you will have no induced voltage in the secondary winding. Now, this is regardless if we have a load or if we don't have a load. So this current which is the no load current is actually the current that is needed to have the voltage induced in the secondary. This is why it's called excitation or magnetization current because it magnetizes the core and let the flux go through the core and induce the voltage in the, in the secondary. So without this current, there will be no induction. There will be no transformer action. So this is why this current is in needed and is very important. How to measure it? There are two important tests we do in the transformer. We call them routine tests as per the IEC standard. And there are some other tests, but these tests are to measure the losses. One of them is called the open circuit test. The other is called the short circuit test. I have a video describing details of these tests. You can refer to those videos. Now, during the open circuit test to measure the core loss, what we do, basically, we open circuit one side of the transformer, and in this side is the high voltage. So it's an open circuit. And you can see here down, 
this is the high voltage side of the transformer. It is an open circuit. And then we energize the transformer from the low voltage side. This is the low voltage side with the rated voltage. And this is the low voltage side of the transformer. We connect here the, uh, the high voltage. And then we measure the current in the low voltage side. This is my no load current. Okay, so this is how we measure it. The question is, why do we need to measure it? To explain this, I will explain it from the magnetic circuit point of view, because at the end of the day, the transformer is basically a magnetic circuit. So this is an example that we have two identical magnetic circuit. One is uh, has one millimeter air gap. The other one doesn't have. This is the only difference. And here are the different parameters of the uh, core material, the cross section area, the magnetic path of the flux, the number of turn, permeability, and both of them have exactly the same flux, 1.5 Tesla. Now, how to solve these circuits? That's not the scope here. You can, again, refer to some other of my videos that I go and solve these magnetic circuits in detail. But what I want to find is what is the needed current in both scenarios if these two magnetic circuits are identical and I have only one and one millimeter air gap in the second one. So we, when you do the calculation, you will find that I need 27.3 milliamps to establish this flux density in the core. On the other hand, and because for this one millimeter gap, I will need 3.44 amps. So it is more than two order of magnitudes of this current. So the current increased to a very significant value. Why is that? Because the air gap has a very high reluctance for the flux to, to go through it. So I will need more current to produce my magnetomotive force, or we call it the MMF, to be able to run or to be able to make the flux go through this circuit along with the air gap. So that is something very, very important. So basically, the no load current is a measure of basically if there is an air gap. Now, how this is important for the transformer business. Now, in the core, the core is basically made from sheets. And these sheets are laminated from both sides, insulated from each side. And we stack them one by one. So these are the different uh, sheets stacked on each other. This is coming from the core cutting machine. And we have them here. And then we have manual to come and start to, to stack them on top of each, each other. Now, why we make the core made, made from those uh, sheets? Because we want to reduce the eddy current loss. Now, when you start to stack them, there will be some air gaps here between the different parts. This is something you can't avoid because a human is doing this and stacking them. And once you stack them, there will be some air gaps. So the no load current basically is a measure of how good is your core. How much is your, so when, you, when the no load current is very high, it means that you have a poor manufacturing of the core and the worker that does the stacking is not, you did not do it very well and you have a lot of air gaps. So maybe then you need to go and check your uh, your core. So this is why we need to measure the no load current in the in the core or in the in the transformer. The last question I'd like to measure to, or to answer is basically when you go and measure the current using an oscilloscope, it is a distorted current. It's not a sinusoidal. Although my input is a sinusoidal, the, 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 the current, or sorry, the voltage that I apply is a sinusoidal. So why my current is not sinusoidal? This is a practical uh, current that I measured, I would say maybe around uh, 30 years ago, long, long time ago. So this is a 1 kVA transformer. 220 by 270, okay? And I energize the transformer with the 220 volt. I measure the current. You can see here clearly the current is not sinusoidal. Why is that? To, un 
answer this last question, we need to go back to the, the pH curve. In the pH curve, basically, it is it has a linear and then goes for saturation region. Okay. Now, this is the P in the Y axis. This is the H. Now, the P basically is nothing but your flux density is equal to the flux divided by the core cross-section area. The core cross-section area is a constant. So the only thing that is changing is the flux. So this is why I say this is a flux. H or magnetic field intensity basically is equal to N number of turns, I current divided by L is the magnetic path of the flux. In the number of turns is a constant, the path is also constant, then I is the only the only thing that is you can control, then this is why we have it as an I. So this is basically a relationship between the flux and the, and the current. Now let's see the input of this, uh, I would call it a transfer function. Okay, so the input for it is the, is my, uh, this is my voltage and this is my flux. And we know that the flux, the voltage is basically the derivative of your flux. This is the flux that goes through the core. So the, since the voltage is sinusoidal, your flux is also sinusoidal. And there is this 90 degree phase shift because one is cosine will be, the other one will be, will be a cosine function. Now, because when we design the transformer, we go, we select the value of B to be to be at the knee point. So that the transformer basically is at the saturation level. And again, I have one video to explain why we need to do that. I will put it in the description of the uh, of this video. Okay, so if this is my input, this is a, like a transfer function, let me find the output, which is the current. Now, if you trace point by point, you will get that the current, it will look like this, similar to the current I just showed you and just measured. This is why it's sinusoidal, because the relationship between the flux and the current is basically the pH curve, which is also nonlinear. 